Our special guest today on SME is someone who is performing one of those duties that has to come from the heart. Before you can do what she does, you have to have a very special heart of gold. Ifoma Orifa is in the building. We're going to take a quick look into the world of caregiving and the opportunities that lie therein with regards this as an industry or a business. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, so caregiving. Um, the first thing you think of when you hear caregiving, you just think, oh, you're a nurse, mm. right? So are you a nurse? I'm a nurse by profession. Okay. I was trained in Enugu at okay. um, Association Hospital Park in Enugu. Okay. So I became a nurse about 13 years ago. 13 years. Now, um, having that experience in nursing in Nigeria, I know you must have gone through a lot of different types of experiences, but there is a, a, a bit of distance between nursing and caregiving. Can you tell us the difference? Yeah, there's a very big difference. So one of the biggest differences is their scope of work. Okay. So in as much as both of them are working in the care industry, yeah. but nurses take on more professional nursing tasks okay. that a caregiver cannot take. For instance, the giving of injections, IVs, so access to intra and veins, yes. intramuscular access, and also giving of medications, some specialized medication has okay. to be given by a nurse. Okay. Also wound care and okay. so many others. All right, so a caregiver doesn't give injections, doesn't exactly do what a nurse does. Exactly. Um, but uh, I guess they are assisting with living activities, right? Exactly. So we call it activities of daily living. Okay. A caregiver ca helps a patient or a client carry out activities of daily living. For instance, this morning I woke up and dressed myself, and I'm sure you did too. Yes, of course. But a caregiver can help someone who's vulnerable, probably an aged person or a sick person, or someone who needs help getting by to carry out those activities they would have done unaided. So that's the role of a caregiver. Right. For instance, grooming, right. bathing, and all that. Okay. So now I, I understand everything you mean now, but I also had my mindset towards the aged only. So it's not just about aged people now. You're also saying people who could have been wounded. Exactly. Okay. For instance, we can have a stroke patient who's just recovering from stroke, an episode. Okay. So a caregiver can help the person with mobility, mm. help in transferring them from one place to the other, okay. prepare their meals, okay. light, um, care, light home, 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 um, home care, okay. and also different things just to get by. All right. So now you do training courses uh, sure. with, with these caregivers. Mm -hmm. um, how long do these courses take, for instance? Okay, it ranges from, from six weeks to three months. That's the basic course. Okay. We have some that ranges from six months to one year. Hmm. That's the more advanced course for caregivers. All right. It, it feels like, okay, uh, does it take that long to train me how to look after someone else? Why can't I just, you know, go online and watch a video and... You know. Hmm. About that. Okay. Remember it um something a video that was making this round on the internet okay. where some Nigerians were maltreating a dementia patient. Okay. That exactly happened because the caregivers did not go through ascent care. Okay. Or courses like us because we understand that over and beyond what is written, there are ethics that should guide the profession. Okay. So we teach the ethics, we teach the knowledge base, and we also teach practicals. Okay. So before you become a caregiver, a seasoned caregiver, mm. you should be well-baked okay. so that you understand the 360 degree or 360 approach of it all, okay. and then you go and deliver. All right, so now I, I, I've, we know that we have people come into our homes to take care of our children, uh, like nannies and, um, let's say, house helps, mm. uh, caretakers in the house. They are not exactly the caregivers you're talking about, right? No. Okay. So um, a caregiver is the best nanny you can think of. Why okay. do I say so? So over and beyond baiting a child, okay. you can check and see that, oh, this child's temperature is high. Okay. What do I do? Should mm. I call the nurse? Mm. Understand the vital signs. Mm. That's the temperature, pulse, respiration, and BP of okay. someone you're caring for. So for a nanny, you just concentrate on the 
um, temperature pulse yeah. and respiration of the child, if yeah. something significantly changes, yes. a caregiver will detect. A nanny will never know mm. until mm. the mother comes in. So I think okay. it's safer to have a caregiver than, as your nanny. Yeah. As your nanny. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Now, I want to talk a bit about some of the images we were seeing on the screen not too long ago. Mm. You have a facility. I do. Uh, what sort of facility is this? Talk to us about it. Okay, so we have a very a, a five-star facility, if I should say, okay. right here in Lagos State. And this facility is an assisted living facility. Okay. The essence of this facility is for families who do not have, um, maybe they don't have time to take care of their loved ones. Yeah. For instance, this morning, we are dressed and we're here this morning. Yeah, yeah. And my sick mom or my aged mom could be at home mm. and nobody to care for her. My kids have gone to school, husband has gone to work. Mm. So what happens to her? Will she mm. stay alone? Mm. Would I be comfortable leaving her with a nanny who has no idea of any disease condition okay. or what to expect You know, when things mm. change? Mm. So I'd rather get a caregiver in or I put them in a facility. Okay. At Asian Care Home Health Facility, okay. we have a standard facility where we have registered nurses, okay. caregivers, doctors, oh, wow. physiotherapists, nutritionists. There we give a holistic care. Okay, so wait, so people can come and stay, come and live yes. in your facility? Yes, so they, we have a long-term living, we have the um, respite care, okay. where they can come in for just a period of time, maybe okay. a month, two months, and okay. go home. And then we have the daycare. Daycare? So you, yes. So like you can like actually, children's daycare exactly, for adults? Exactly, adult daycare. So you can actually bring in your elderly mom or dad, mm -hmm. they come stay with us, we entertain them, we can feed them, mm -hmm. we get a... Um, an exercise, someone from the gym, okay. to actually come and do planned exercise. For people uh, over the age of... For, so let's say from 50. We, from, okay. we have some incidences where yeah. we have someone 55 years who actually has dementia. We call it wow. early onset dementia. Wow. So in such cases, yes, mm. they can come in at that age and then okay. we have as old as 92. As old as 92? Yes. Okay, so how many spaces do you have in this facility? Okay, so our first facility is the one I'm talking about in Ogba, and okay. we have about 15 bed spaces. 15 bed spaces? Yes. And how many are living in right now? We have 10 people living in. Right? 10 people living in? Okay, yes. Okay, fantastic. Um, now, for daycare, I have to ask, because I know how much daycare for children costs. How much does it cost for an aged parent or loved one to stay at your facility okay. for the day. Let me shock you. Okay. Sometimes it's cheaper than what you have for children. Okay. Although we do much more. Mm -hmm. So it ranges from from ten thousand yeah. to twenty thousand, depending on what okay. what we do for the person. Okay. So if meal is involved is a little bit more high is a little bit more expensive. But yeah. yeah, it's not expensive, it's affordable. Okay. So you provide meals, care, entertainment for these aged parents and exercise. Exercise. And um, you have facility for over, well, for about 15 people. That's, yeah. that's really interesting. And that's for the mainland. We are going over to the island before the second quarter of this month, this All year. All right. Now, I, I've heard about facilities like these abroad many times, uh, and I just felt like there wasn't anyone focusing on this particular area or this particular sector. And there must be a reason for that. It must you know, take a lot to build this kind of facility. When did it start for you and how challenging has it been? Okay, as a child, I saw my grandfather, he lived up to 84. I saw him try to live independently on his own. Mm. And my mother would always send me to him to give him food, to mm. help him, to clean, mm. to do stuff for him. And I saw the struggles. Mm. So growing up, I wanted naturally to become a nurse to understand care. Okay. But again, I was drawn into caregiving because I saw that struggle and there's nobody filling the gap. Wow. So I decided to take it up. Mm. I became um, an assist, and I became a nurse, and then I went over to the U.S. I did some courses. I became an affiliate with American Caregivers Association. Okay. So I'm not just a nurse; I am a master caregiver, okay. and also I have affiliation with them. So I'm a coach for okay. caregivers. Fantastic, fantastic. The, now this journey feels like it feels like there's still so much more to this story, and you must have been through so many different experiences with so many different types of people. Sure. Um, but I have to say, you look and sound like you're enjoying this work. <laughs> this seems like the kind of work that I'm like, uh, I, I don't know how, yeah. um, how, I know how stressful it is looking after even children, and they do say that 
when people get to a certain age, they become children again. But how are you able to manage all that? To be honest with you, I love what I do. Okay. This is the best. It's very, it's very, uh, it's not just about the money now. So it's lucrative, yeah? Okay. But it's not about the money. It is fulfilling. Okay. I go to, I go to my home, I lie down and I'm happy. I did wow. something for families. So I'm not wow. doing it just for the aged parents that you came to, you brought to us. Yeah. I'm doing it for the entire family. Everybody can go home and relax and say, oh, mm. yeah, my father is okay somewhere. My wow. mom is okay somewhere. Wow. So it's very fulfilling. I enjoy it. I oh. tell the people I teach mm. that you're going to clean you're going to have to clean pool, but mm. clean it and be the best at it. And then you find joy doing it. Mm. And of course, you find good pay doing mm. it. So even right here in Nigeria, yeah. they are... That was actually where I was going, because you said right here in Nigeria, we've heard, we know about how many people are doing what they can to jackpot mm -hmm. and run out of the country. And many of them, large percentage of them, go into the caregiving sector abroad. Do you have courses for that specifically? Sure. As okay. I said earlier, we are affiliated with American Caregivers Association. Okay. So we train caregivers okay. and license them to actually go and become caregivers both home and abroad. Wow. So we have more than 500 people wow. that have gone to UK alone. Wow. And then we have we have direct relationship with some employers, even in Canada. Wow. So people Fantastic. come through us and become whatever they want to be. Okay. Honestly, I think you've just answered that question that was on everybody's mind. Where do they go and learn to be a caregiver if, in case they want to jackpot? I knew you were ask, waiting for that answer, and she's given it. I have yeah. to say thank you to you, thank you so for much. everything you do. It's definitely a labor of love. Sure. Because if you don't love this particular job, I don't know how you'll be able to Truly. do it. Truly. It's very good. But it you. takes a lot. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Uh, we're definitely going to be looking out for you and uh, how big your business is definitely going to become eventually.